Chapter Twenty Eight. Jack takes swimming lessons. Hiccup felt the air get sucked out of his lungs, and like the rest of his body was being reduced to tiny, vibrating particles. His sword arm remained raised, pointing the blade at the Snow Queen. A voice in his head asked, Will this be the last time I see his face? But it wasn't really Jack's face. He could see that now. In the dark, while he still hadn't suspected anything was wrong, and hadn't had a reason to study the face in front of him, it had looked like Jack. But now he saw that it was just a version of Jack that was almost him, but not quite. It was too still, for one. And his eyes were glassy, lacking a certain spark in them that made them human. What did you do? Hiccup found himself asking, not knowing what else to say than exactly what the Snow Queen had told him he would. Oh, I've dreamed of this moment, the Snow Queen said. She would have sounded almost conversational, hadn't it been for the prickling cold feeling her voice carried. Hiccup was immediately reminded of the first bitter winds that preceded devastating winter and the following concerns that came with it. How would they keep everyone warm, fed, sheltered? Would everyone make it this time around? And here stood the catalyst of all these fears, wearing the face of the person Hiccup most wanted to keep safe from her wrath, though her words indicated he'd already failed at that. That is, of course, if I ever did sleep, the Snow Queen mused. But I thought of it, imagined it, turned it around and inside out to dissect just the right way to dispose of that boy. Hiccup gritted his teeth and pointed the blade just barely into the Snow Queen's throat. She didn't react with any more than an almost curious tilt of her head, but there was a sizzling noise where the hot iron met her skin. Where are they? he demanded. The Snow Queen smiled in imitation of Jack's lopsided smirk. Would you go through with that, little warrior? she asked, raising her chin to further expose her neck. She even inched ever so slightly forward, and the blade etched into her. As if snuffed out by a sudden gust of wind, the flames were extinguished. Hiccup's breath caught in his throat. Obviously, the last couple of days had shown him more magic than he'd ever hoped to see. Still, this little trick made a deep-rooted fear wake in him from all the stories they'd been told as children, about knocker and race and everything lurking in the blackest shadows of the deep, dark forest. Jack had told him there was no way they could fight the Snow Queen. She was too powerful, too dangerous. Just looking into her eyes made Hiccup start to believe that he was right. However, that fear wasn't what kept Hiccup from separating the head from the body. From the other end of the blade, even if there was something that looked indefinably off, Jack looked back at him. You're not him, Hiccup said, his voice coming out as a whisper. I could kill you. Kill me? The Snow Queen repeated, raising her puppet's brows. I'm afraid not, little warrior. You'd have to find me to do that. She's saying it's possible, was Hiccup's first impossible thought the part of his brain that had definitely taken after his father. I can make her disappear. She can be killed. And then came the part of his brain that wasn't doing anything good for anyone. And then, maybe, maybe Jack would stay. Jack. Jamie. They're not dead, Hiccup growled, as if saying it determinedly would bring them back if they were. You have no power here. Not yet. Jack told me so. Jack the Snow Queen said, contempt filtering through her otherwise calm, whispery voice. Is treading into territories he does not belong. Is, Hiccup repeated, not was. The Snow Queen began to scowl, but her face quickly softened again. She hummed thoughtfully. A young man in love, she sighed with mock fondness. Treasure your days with him while you still can, little warrior. Anger surged to Hiccup's head. His cheeks burned with it, and the embarrassment of having those vulnerable feelings exposed. He's done nothing to offend you, he spat. Whatever you think he's taken from you, it's not true. He just wants to go home. The Snow Queen went quiet. She peered at him, unmoving, for so long that Hiccup wondered if she'd turned to ice. Then she nodded, as if coming to an agreement with herself, and placed a gentle hand on the blade. Frost rapidly spread over it and onto the hilt. Hiccup dropped it in a panic and backed away as the Snow Queen started to approach him. Don't be afraid, little warrior she said, raising a hand to Hiccup's face. I can't hurt you yet. It was Hiccup's turn to have his back forced against a tree. The Snow Queen's touch didn't feel like anything but a cold breeze against his skin. She gave him an almost sympathetic look. He is not what you think he is, she whispered, as if sharing a secret. Remember that. Then a slight tremble went through her body. Snowflakes brushed against Hiccup's cheek, settling on his shoulder, and he realized it was to the jack puppet's hand disintegrating. The rest of the body quickly followed, turning to snow and flurrying away in the breeze right before Hiccup's eyes. 
there came a soft thump from the ground in front of him. He looked down and had to really peer at the object to understand what it was he was looking at. When he understood, he felt bile rise in his throat. A heart. Ice was quickly engulfing it, turning it completely white and frozen. He kept swore he could see it beat its last feeble beats before going still. Slowly, it crumbled the same way the Snow Queen had. Hiccup stood still while his own heart hammered in his chest. The forest was dark and silent. All he could hear was the pounding in his ears. His cheek felt almost painfully cold where the Snow Queen had touched him. Maybe she'd gifted him the same mark that she'd given Jack. Jack, he muttered, and staggered forward on trembling legs. He grabbed the frozen inferno from the ground and bolted for the campsite. Jack! Jamie! He'd almost made it there when Toothless came bounding out of the dark, and they scarcely avoided a collision. Hiccup grabbed his face to check for injuries, but he seemed fine, just a little confused by Hiccup's behavior. Footsteps to his right. He whirled around, raising the sword instinctively. Hiccup, what's going on? Jack asked, coming to a sudden stop at the sight of the weapon, which made Jamie stumble into him from behind. Jack's voice was slightly breathless, and higher in pitch than usual due to his distress. But it was clean and soft, if not a little groggy from sleep, and definitely his. Hiccup almost collapsed on top of him when he stumbled forward to hug him. Jack's arms went stiff in surprise, but he didn't pull away. Hiccup? he said hesitantly. If the situation had been more light-hearted, Hiccup might have accused him of making fun of his name. Hiccup pulled back, looking them both over. They both seemed unharmed, and like Toothless, just confused and scared from Hiccup's dramatic return. He even felt a burst of relief at seeing the fairy zipping around Jamie's head. She... 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 Hiccup started, but had to clear his throat when his voice came out sounding like a frog with a cold. He tried again. <clears throat> she was here. Toothless came up to her side, growling what sounded like a concerned question. Hiccup gratefully ran his hand over his scales and the familiar spikes on his head, leaning some of his weight on him. She? Jack echoed in a small voice. Hiccup nodded. The Snow Queen. Jack blinked several times, shaking his head almost imperceptibly. What? He croaked. He looked around, gripping his staff with the other hand as well. How? When? Why did you say was? She sort of disintegrated? Hiccup muttered, running a hand over his face where the Snow Queen had touched him. Left behind a... a heart of some sort of animal, but it also disintegrated. He paused, a horrible thought coming to his mind. You have to believe me, he added urgently. I was there, I saw it. Hank, of course we'll believe you. Jack interrupted, managing to place an exasperated laugh in his voice, despite his troubled expression. Let's, let's just get back to the fire first, and you can tell us what happened. You're shivering. Hiccup hadn't even realized. He wasn't sure if it was because he was cold or rattled. Probably a pleasant mix of both. The fire wasn't much to brag about when they got back, but instead of going searching for twigs again, Toothless just blasted an innocent tree to pieces, and they used the splinters to reinvigorate the flames. Efficient. Should have just done that from the start, Hiccup muttered. How do you feel? Jack asked, coming to a crouch beside Hiccup. He looked him up and down. Are you hurt? Do you feel anything? Hiccup didn't know exactly what did it, but he suddenly felt very small under Jack's inquiring gaze. Not in a bad way, but in a way that made Hiccup aware of the fact that these past weeks Jack had usually been the one getting into trouble and Hiccup the one to look after him. Now the roles were reversed. Cold, he admitted. She touched my face. Jack grimaced. She has a habit of doing that. I got a feeling she was imagining how I'd look as a sculpture by her throne. Oh, Hiccup said. Jack's hazel eyes looked intently into Hiccup's. What did she do? he asked in a voice that was a lot gentler than normal. Hiccup wondered just how rattled he seemed to him and Jamie. Breaking the heavy eye contact, Hiccup turned to the flames. He recalled the Snow Queen's expressions shining through that uncanny imitation of Jack's face. He had to tell them about that, he knew, but there was something so shameful about it all. The fact that he hadn't noticed that anything was wrong, even going as far as saying all that he'd said to her. His cheeks started to heat up again, and there was a small lump in his throat he couldn't quite rid himself of. She disguised herself as you, Jack. Jack didn't move. Oh, he whispered after a few long seconds. I hoped you'd know, Hiccup said, forcing himself to look back at Jack and Jamie. She created those eagles, but at least those were white in Chet Snow. That, that imitation of you. It looked exactly like you, Jack. Even your voice. I thought... 
I thought it was you. Jake's jaw clenched. Did you tell her anything? Hiccup didn't know if he wanted to laugh or cry. He shook his head. Nothing, he lied. I figured it out before I got the chance to. How? Jamie asked, quietly, as if he wasn't sure if he was allowed to talk or not. Uh, just something seemed off? Hiccup said, averting his eyes in hopes that nobody would read his expression and see how humiliated he felt. Not to speak of hopeless. The fact that he'd realized something was wrong when Jack insinuated he returned his feelings just reinforced Hiccup's suspicion that this dumb, impractical crush was entirely misplaced and would get him nowhere. I asked her what my name was. She couldn't answer. There was a pause. When Hiccup looked back, Jack had a strange, sort of distant look on his face, though he was still staring at Hiccup. Jamie was frowning. And you're sure she disappeared? Uh, well, I'm not a spirit expert, but it seems that way, he said, looking at Jack for some sort of confirmation, even if he was probably as lost as the rest of them. Then it was Hiccup's turn to frown. Shouldn't I have noticed her presence? Magic and all? Jack visibly snapped out of his contemplative state. Same as the eagles and the attack on Burke, he said. She was never really here. I don't think she could have hurt you even if she wanted to. Hiccup grimaced. I kind of get the impression she did. Want to. Hurt me, I mean. He gave a feeble laugh. Charming first impression. I think she probably just tried to get some information out of you, Jack said, and his lips quirked up in a smile. It was good to see it back the way it should be, not some cold parody of it. Your quick wits bested her, Hiccup. Congratulations. Points to you. He patted his shoulder. Hiccup weakly returned his smile. Thanks. Then he remembered something else. Um, how did the, the passing out go? Jack and Jamie shared a glance, but Hiccup couldn't decipher what it meant. Jack patted his satchel. All good, he said. He gave a heavy sigh as he got to his feet. We should move. Deeper into the island. Even if it's only slightly warmer, we could be safer there. He offered Hiccup a hand, and Hiccup let himself be pulled to his feet. He winced when he put weight on his prosthetic. Jack placed a hand right over his elbow. It's fine, Hiccup reassured him. Or it will be fine. Jack's lips pressed together. He nodded, but there was a silent apology in his eyes. Hiccup knew him well enough to know that he was blaming himself, so Hiccup just shook his head. It'll be fine, he repeated, and briefly placed a hand over Jack's. Trust me. The vision had been another confusing case. Jack, Jamie, and Babytooth had appeared inside a church during what Jack quickly estimated was somewhere during the Victorian era. It was winter again, but Jack was sure he'd never seen that church before, and he definitely knew nothing of the couple that was baptizing their baby inside it. Still, the crystal was easy enough to find. Inside the font, in the water, which Jack thought was a particular kind of uncomfortable to stick his hand in, and when they woke up, Jack didn't want to admit how lost he felt. It was winter. Jamie reminded him in English, his voice quiet as they settled down around the new campfire. Though they'd moved far away from the previous campsite, further into the island as Jack had suggested, this place didn't look much different. The forest was massive. However, they'd settled nearby an open clearing, which relieved them of some of the weird claustrophobic feeling that shrouded the forest. True, Jack agreed in a mumble, but it didn't seem enough. He wanted to see the connection between all the visions, but now there had been two visions that Jack couldn't place. Then he just shook his head, because he didn't want to discuss that right now, not while Hiccup was still so skittish. What a day it had been. Jack supposed he should be glad they'd managed to find two traces in two days, but it was hard to feel celebratory when the Snow Queen had to come and spoil it. Jack's chest was filled with unforeseen anger. Guilt, too, for sure, but he had expected that. Guilt from the whole time travel thing in the first place, guilt from putting Burke in danger, guilt from letting Hiccup come along with them, even if Hiccup didn't take no for an answer. Jack knew the Snow Queen was dangerous. She'd already taken Jamie and Skada hostage before, and that had made him furious as well. This was different. Because whatever the Snow Queen had done to make Hiccup, not just scared, but so strangely quiet, she had done so while wearing Jack's face. Hiccup would barely meet his eyes. Jack knew he meant no harm, but it struck something very sore in his chest. We should make a coat, Jamie said. He was sitting with his knees up under his chin, frowning into the fire. Something to prove that we are ourselves and not the Snow Queen. Jack grunted his teeth, swallowing down his despair at the fact that Jamie, just an eleven-year-old boy, had to sit here and take such precautions. He put on a smile instead. Good idea, he said. 
More cards? Hiccup said. Jack was glad to hear his voice was getting back to normal and that he managed to smile a little easier than earlier. What if we forget? It should be a question that only we know the answer to, Jamie said, nodding smartly to himself. Like how some uh, web pages ask things like, what was the name of your first pet? Hiccup squinted. Who? Jamie just shook his head. It's not important, but you get it, right? Can't you two just speak together in your native language? Hiccup asked, and Jack wondered if there was the slightest hint of a jab in there. Oh, good point, Jamie said. I was going to ask, do you stop believing in the moon when the sun comes up? It took a few seconds before Jack remembered where he'd heard that before, though in another language. He smiled slowly, elbowing Jamie. No, do you stop believing in the sun when clouds block it out? No, Jamie said with a bright smile. See, she never figured that out. And Hiccup, what if I ask you, um, how, how do you draw the rune for luck? Hiccup started to raise his hand to draw in the air, but Jamie shook his head. No, I know, he said. You have to say something special. Something that you can't just guess would be the answer to the question. Like, this is the third time I've told you that already. Hiccup laughed then. Why do you keep making my voice like that? It's just what you sound like, Jamie said with a shrug. But you get me, right? That way, it's not something we'll forget. So if I say... Hiccup pursed his lips thoughtfully. Man, I really miss Burke's limpet stew. Ew, Jamie said. That would be too obvious, I think. It's good because the most obvious answer, for someone who's never tried it and, dare I say, the Snow Queen hasn't, would be, oh yeah, me too. But we all know nobody would answer that if they knew what they were talking about. Good point. Then I'll say, what about the mutton chops? Are you sure this is easier to remember? Jack asked. Jamie shrugged. Maybe not, he admitted. It's more fun that way, though. Jack nodded. Very reasonable, he agreed. What about you two? Jamie asked. There was a thoughtful silence that gradually turned awkward. The truth was, Jack could remember an embarrassingly long list of things Hiccup had said to him, things that had ingrained themselves into Jack's mind, for better or for worse. But mostly for better. Like what he'd said back at Eden and Ruins when they were talking in the dark. I like being beside you, Jack. No number of fairies or knock or other, other types of martial arts are going to change that. And would you have stayed behind? In that quiet, careful tone of his, one that Jack liked to imagine sounded hopeful. And his entire speech on the trading ship. If helping you is dangerous, then it's a risk I want to take. The list went on, and it kept piling up. Jack didn't know why his brain was so desperate to remember it all, but what he did know was that it sometimes made him feel as if he'd burst if he thought too much about it, with joy or gratitude or fondness. But he couldn't admit any of that out loud. Despite how much he trusted Hiccup, there was something terrifying about outright letting him know how much power his words had over Jack. And besides, it was embarrassing. Either way, this wasn't the moment. Not when Hiccup's eyes kept shifting the way they did, instead of holding Jack's gaze. Jack hadn't even realized that that was something he reveled in before it changed. Not just being seen, but being seen by Hiccup specifically. Jack stretched. Let's think about that tomorrow, he decided, because this game wasn't fun to play anymore. We should get some shut-eye for now. I can take the first watch. No, I'll do it, Hiccup said. I'm not going to sleep anyway, and you'll probably need the rest after all that magic crystal stuff. He waved vaguely towards Jack's satchel. He wasn't wrong about them needing some rest, but Jack felt it had more to do with him being kidnapped by magic snow eagles and then Jamie being kidnapped by an actual dragon. In Jack's humble opinion, two kidnappings in one day seemed excessive. All right, Jack said, and tried to send Hick up a smile, just to meet his eyes for a second. Just don't stay up all night. You need rest too. Hiccup smiled briefly back at him and nodded. It was much colder without the blanket. Jamie snuggled up to Jack and they lay as close to the fire as they dared. Only Baby Tooth seemed comfortable, hiding in the folds of Jack's cloak around his neck. If he concentrated, Jack could hear his soft breathing and feel her feathers brush against him. On the other side of the fire, Hiccup sat with his legs crossed, and on them, Toothless was resting his head, dozing off while Hiccup absently ran his hand over his scales. Hiccup's gaze was distant, staring emptily into the dark like he was far, far away. Good night, Hiccup, Jack said. Hiccup blinked like he'd forgotten he wasn't alone. Night, Jack, he replied. Sleep well. Jack looked at him for a few more seconds before forcing himself to close his eyes. He didn't think he fell asleep, but when he opened his eyes again, the fire had dimmed. 
Beside him, Jamie was sleeping, his nose pressed against Jack's chest. Hiccup sat in almost the same position as before, except his posture looked a little bit more relaxed as he leaned against Toothless. His expression, however, was far from relaxed. He was holding an inferno in front of himself, studying it. He flipped it around, his brows pinched together. It looked like he was trying to ignite it, and when it didn't work, his jaw clenched in frustration and he turned his gaze towards the darkness of the forest. He sighed slowly, putting the blade on the ground without retracting it. Beside him, his prosthetic lay unattached to his leg, and Hiccup's other hand was massaging the stump absentmindedly. It had to be hurting from the way he was running earlier. Jack wanted to talk to him. He didn't know what he could say to make it better, but he felt desperate to try. However, Hiccup didn't seem like he wanted to talk to anyone right now, and maybe especially not Jack. Jack was almost convinced Hiccup was unnerved by him right now, after the Snow Queen's trick. It was strange, even slightly terrifying, how much Jack's mind lurched at the thought of that being the case. He recognized the feeling from another time, when the Guardians had thought he'd betrayed them in exchange for his memories. Back then, Jack had had something akin to friends for the first time, as far as he remembered, in his entire life. And then he'd lost it all, and Jack had felt lonelier than ever. This was the same sort of panic, but with a slightly different feel to it. Jack thought he knew why. If everything went as it should, his time as a human teenager was limited. His time with Hiccup was limited. And even now that his memories were mostly restored, he couldn't remember ever having what he had with Hiccup. A friend his age, someone he trusted, and someone who trusted him. Someone who wanted to look after Jack as much as Jack wanted to look after them. It was terrifying, because Jack still remembered why he initially hadn't wanted to get close to anyone from the past. It was growing close to a boy who was, in the time in which Jack belonged, long dead and gone. Maybe it would have been wiser to reject Hiccup's offer of friendship back then. Jack knew then, and he knew still, that he was setting himself up for hurt and grief. The bond that he and Hiccup had was growing into something strong, and the thought of losing it made Jack's throat tighten, almost choking him. It couldn't happen, but it would. Hiccup leaned sideways against Toothless and folded his knees. His cheek pressed against Toothless's neck. The light from the fire cast him in a soft, golden light, hitting his eyes in a way that made him seem misty. He looked small like that, Jack thought sadly. He looked so lost. Jack took the second shift after what, according to Hiccup, was a few hours, but only felt like a few measly minutes. It had gotten colder, so after gathering more firewood, they all huddled up against Toothless, who seemed to be the only one of them able to get some proper sleep. Jamie slept between Jack and Hiccup, allowing him to absorb as much heat as he possibly could. Hiccup fell asleep almost immediately. Jack had a suspicion he'd actually been exhausted all along, but was simply afraid to let his guard down. His brows were furrowed even in his sleep. The sky had just been beginning to lighten when Jamie woke up. Do you think was the first thing he said, his voice sluggish with sleep. That a better code word would be chestnuts roasting by an open fire? Then he fell back asleep again. Jack shook his head fondly. Absolutely not, he whispered, even if Jamie couldn't hear him, and probably wouldn't remember suggesting that in the first place. What was that? He got pushed himself up, petting the ground next to him. He seemed too tired to properly open his eyes. Jack handed him his prosthetic. Just Jamie being Jamie? he replied quietly. You can sleep some more if you want. Hiccup hummed noncommittally. He yawned and rubbed his eyes. Maybe. He mumbled, then managed to squint his eyes open. His hair was flat on one side of his head and stuck out on the other. Jack's lack of poker face made him frown at him. Bad head? he guessed. Nah, Jack said. You look fine. Liar, Hiccup said, smiling tiredly. He lay back against Toothless and sighed, closing his eyes again. Maybe just a little more sleep. Jack watched as the muscles in his face gradually relaxed and listened as his breath turned to soft snores. A couple more hours or so passed before they woke up for real, but they didn't move until after they'd eaten their breakfast, which was the food given to them by Eden and Rune. Jack's limbs were stiff when he got to his feet, his back cracking when he stretched. He grimaced. Old age? Jamie commented. Huh. <laughs> Hiccup sat with his knees up to his chest, his prosthetic attached again, and yawned for the millionth time that morning, then groaning when Toothless made a whining sound, tapping a paw against Hiccup's chest, which was, with a dragon's size and strength, enough to knock him over. Yeah, 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 he muttered. It's not like you've been flying for most of the past two days. 
Not the fun kind of flying, Jack said, feeling the need to defend Toothless. Hiccup hummed. That's true. Jamie, how do you feel today? Jamie blinked. Fine, he replied suspiciously. Are you in the mood for some lessons, then? Hiccup asked with a knowing smile that turned brighter when Jamie gasped and jumped to his feet. Yes, he said, clapping his hands together. Now? Can we do it now? Better to do it while the sun is up, Hiccup said, then looked at Jack. How about you? Jack wanted to say yes, and he almost did. Why would he turn down a chance to throw the sky just for fun's sake? But he glanced at Toothless and shook his head. I'll pass, he said. It's Jamie who's a natural at flying, so he should get some private lessons. Besides, it will be less weight for Toothless. Oh, yeah, Hiccup said, but shifted uneasily. You shouldn't be here alone, though. I'm not alone. Baby Tooth is here, Jack said. Besides, the Snow Queen can't harm us here. You're forgetting that the Snow Queen isn't the only dangerous thing in the archipelago, Hiccup reminded him. Jack spun his staff, missing the times he could just freeze whatever he felt like freezing. Just don't fly too far away. If something happens, I'll scream. Jamie snorted. Baby Tooth is fast. She'll alert us, he said, bouncing on the balls of his feet. Come on, let's go. Hiccup seemed reluctant still, but he agreed to let Jack stay on the promise that he would keep Inferno nearby. Jack followed them out of the clearing and watched with some envy as Hiccup and Jamie mounted Toothless and took to the skies. He kept his eyes on them as they became smaller and smaller and grinned when Jamie waved at him from above. He waved back. Baby Tooth landed on his shoulder, twittering softly. Jack wrapped himself in his cloak and sat down where he stood, following Toothless with his eyes. Do you know what will happen once we get back, Baby Tooth? he asked. Baby Tooth made a questioning noise. He knows so much, Jack murmured. Things people at this point in time shouldn't know. Don't you think that will have consequences? He was met with a long stretch of silence. He turned his head to look at Baby Tooth. She was wringing her tiny hands, not meeting his eyes. Baby Tooth? She glanced up at him and then away again, before moving from his shoulder and down to his knee. And she started to speak. It took a little while before he registered what she was saying and what it meant. Not because it was hard to understand her language, that's something he had more or less under control these days, but because of the message itself. That's what you talked with Tooth about? he asked. He was faintly aware that his voice was on the verge of breaking. Baby Tooth nodded. Jack looked away, up to the sky again. Tooth had soared overhead. Jack could barely make out his riders. There was a void expanding in his chest, making the world feel very, very far away. That's good, he whispered, and there wasn't a single part of him that meant it. They spent the day exploring the island, looking for magic, though half-heartedly so. Nobody had said anything, but there was a silent agreement between them that they all needed a break. The sky was clear, and with the sun shining down on them, it was almost warm. When they started to grow hungry, they headed back to the ocean to fish. A tree crashed through the forest, and they followed it until the trees began to dwindle. They found a nice little clearing, perfect to camp in. They drank from the creek and cooked the dinner over the campfire as the sun started to set. As they ate, Jamie relayed, not for the first time, what had happened while they were flying, and with all his usual enthusiasm. Hiccup seemed to be in a better mood because of it as well, and Jack made a mental note of that. If Hiccup had a lot on his mind, a flight would probably clear it a little bit. It was almost as if yesterday's event hadn't happened. Jack focused on that and the easy, light-hearted air that had settled around them today. He focused on the sunset and pointed out the pretty colors of the sky and reveled in the fact that Hiccup was looking at him again and smiling and making Jamie laugh as if they'd known each other for years. He watched as Hiccup told Jamie the same story he told Jack before about the Red Death, how he taught his friends to ride dragons in the nick of time and how they defeated it. He tried drawing in the dirt to illustrate just how big the Red Death had been and Tooth had surprised them all except Hiccup by bounding away to find his own stick to draw with. Hiccup shook his head. Scene stealer, he muttered as Toothless painted his dirt masterpiece. It wasn't until hours later, when the sun had long gone down and the moon was shining down on them, that the thoughts Jack had pointedly been avoiding all day caught up with him. He tried not to think about what Baby Tooth had told him, but it was impossible. He thought about it every time he met Hiccup's eyes. It got to a point where he couldn't take it anymore, his restless energy making it feel like it was going to vibrate out of his skin. He wished he could let the wind take hold of him and whisk him away, but instead he just got to his feet. 
Jamie and Hiccup looked up from what they were doing, which was Jamie teaching Hiccup a clapping game, with equally confused expressions. I'm just going for a walk, Jack said. Hiccup blinked. Not alone, he said. Yes, alone, Jack replied. I'll just be up the creek. I'll take Inferno. He picked up the sword before Hiccup could argue, and sent him a smile he hoped was reassuring. I'm just a bit restless, is all. If something happens, you'll hear it. But nothing will happen. He knocked on his wooden staff, just in case. Jamie watched him with inquiring eyes, but didn't say anything. Sometimes Jack wondered just how much he could deduce from just reading Jack's expression. There was something heartwarming about the fact that they'd grown to know each other so well, but right now Jack wished for his invisibility. He just needed to disappear for a bit. As he told them, Jack followed the creek for a considerable time before deviating from that path. He was careful to avoid the parts of the forest that seemed somehow darker or easier to get lost in, taking note of strangely shaped trees or rocks or other memorable things to lead him back to the way he'd come. At least that was something he'd gotten good at as Jack Frost. Or maybe it was a skill he'd acquired as a human that he never quite forgot. Eventually, he reached another glade, surrounded by trees and a hill that gradually sloped into a small mountain. He spotted a body of water a few meters ahead, but there was something different about it than most other ponds. Jack walked closer to it. It was difficult to see in the dark, but Jack was sure he saw steam emanating from it. He crouched by it and held his hand tentatively just above the surface of the water. He'd made this mistake as Jack Frost before, when heat was uncomfortable for him in a whole other way than it was now. Sometimes hot springs were too hot to bathe in. As Jack Frost, all hot springs had been too hot to bathe in. But when Jack dipped his hand in the water, he decided that this one was probably safe. He didn't know why he felt the need to know that. It wasn't like he was going to go into it. He wasn't sure why he kept sitting by the edge of the pool either, but that's what he did. He stared at it. At the shimmering moonlight and the vague shape of the mountain reflected in it. He held his hand over the water, feeling the warmth of it rising and sticking to his palm as dew. Though the scenery was different, the pond reminded him vaguely of Nockens Marsh. If he peered long enough at it, he could almost see a dark shape lurking just beneath the surface. Jack's heart sped up just at the memory of it. How the little boy had turned into that thing and how he'd been powerless as it dragged him into the water. He'd come so close to dying again and with almost no fight whatsoever. If it hadn't been for Hiccup... Jack knew he would have been gone now. It had felt as if the water took away all of Jack's strength and will. Once his head went under, once the sounds from above went quiet and muffled, and his lungs began to ache, his brain had shut off. He'd just given up, just like that. It hadn't even been a question. Water terrified him. Yet it felt like he kept getting into situations where water was involved, almost as if fate was taunting him with it. How long could he go before that power defeated him again? Somehow the idea that he could prevent it seemed impossible. Just like his dreams about Emily that day at the frozen pond. He always knew what would happen, and he was powerless to stop it. But that was a dream about a frozen pond. This pond wasn't in a dream, nor was it frozen. Jack's jaw fell open, surprised at his own train of thought. Don't be stupid, he muttered, shaking his head. You're being stupid. Was he, though? If he was going to think about fate, it seemed almost destined that he should find this hot spring. If he had any chance to overcome his fear of water, it was here, where the water was warm and least likely to remind him of that time. If he could get at least some of that trauma under control and could save his life one day. Jack slowly got to his feet, staring pointedly at the water, as if his actions were the hot spring's fault. Bad idea, he mumbled, not entirely aware that he was muttering to himself. This could potentially be a very bad idea. Or maybe a good idea? The hot spring had no answer for him. Jack glanced up at the moon, then back at the hot spring. He loosened the cloak around his shoulders and let it fall to the ground, then pulled off his boots. The cold wind made him shudder, but he welcomed it in hopes that it would motivate him to actually get into the water. He untied the sash around his waist and dropped that on the ground as well, along with the satchel with the crystals. Then he gave his shirt a narrow look before wringing that off himself as well. His teeth clattered. He glanced at his shoulder. It had been almost five days since he'd been injured, and the wounds were healing nicely. He'd already told Hiccup the wounds weren't as deep as they looked, the bandages he could change later. And maybe it still hurt when he lifted his arm, but if a snow eagle's talons couldn't reopen the wound, taking a swim probably wouldn't either. Not that he knew how to swim. He gingerly lay his staff down on the ground and took a deep breath. 
He started to take a step forward before a moment of doubt made him plant it right back onto dry ground. He clenched and unclenched his hands. Wind blew against his bare chest and back, making him colder by the second. He exhaled and inhaled again, then took a step into the water. It was deeper than he thought it would be, and he gave a yelp as he was submerged up to his thighs. Immediately he wished he'd taken his pants off as well, but what was done was done. He stood stiff as a stick in the water for a few seconds, waiting for something dark and spooky to grab his ankles and pull him under. When it didn't happen, he took another step forward, feeling the ground slope gently downwards. Water rose up to his waist. It felt almost nice. At least it was warm. He stepped forward again until water washed to his chest. His breath was deep and labored, but at least he managed to force it to be even. He lowered himself further into the water until it lapped gently against his neck. Another few breaths. In, out, in, out. Then he took a deep breath and ducked under the surface. Instantly, as the water muffled the noises around him, he felt as if lightning struck his head, sending shockwaves down his spine and out to his fingertips. He shot back up and gasped for air, scrambling to get out. He cursed as he crawled back onto dry land, coughing up the water he'd accidentally swallowed. Bad idea, he concluded inwardly. Now he was sad and wet and cold. He tried calming his heart as he wrapped himself in his cloak, curling up in a fetal position. He'd barely started to catch his breath when he heard the sound of someone walking towards him. His hand was on his staff in a flash. It's just me, he kept yelped, raising his hands. His brows were furrowed in a mix of worry and confusion, and then slight exasperation. And please grab the sword if you think someone's about to attack you? Jack stared at him. He glanced behind him towards the forest, but Hiccup was the only one there. Did did you follow me? He asked incredulously, because there was no way Hiccup could have followed his trays all the way here in the dark without Toothless's help. Ah, uh, well, Hiccup started. Were you spying on me? Jack asked, feeling incredibly disturbed. No, Hiccup protested. Jack didn't need any extra light to know he was blushing. No, no, I was I just... I got worried and... Okay, yes, I followed you, but I wasn't spying on you, um, bathing or anything. There was an extremely awkward pause. Jack wasn't sure how to continue this conversation. Hiccup's eyes fluttered around, but contrary to yesterday, it was merely because he was embarrassed and didn't know where to look. Jack glanced down at his bare chest and pressed his lips shut. Jamie asked me to follow you, Hiccup explained, his eyes directed at his feet. He's with Toothless and Baby Tooth, so he's fine. He said... Jack raised a brow. What? Hiccup met his eyes for a moment and gave him a sheepish smile. He said you probably need someone to talk to, but you don't know how to ask for it, he said. Jamie's words, not mine, though he's probably onto something. I just needed a walk, Jack mumbled. This doesn't look a lot like walking to me, Hiccup pointed out and glanced at the pond. He frowned. Is that a hot spring? Jack nodded. What were you doing? Good question, he grumbled, then shuddered violently as a gust of wind hit them. He pulled the cloak tighter around himself. Was a st stupid idea anyway. Hiccup shifted his weight, hesitating. Then he sat down beside Jack. His fingers started to tap restlessly against his knee. What idea was that exactly? He asked carefully. Jack felt a bit embarrassed to say. After all, it didn't exactly seem like much of a challenge just to go out and stand in the water for a little bit. It was even shallow enough to stand where he'd panicked and chickened out. He also felt embarrassed to admit defeat, which was probably why he'd still not put his shirt back on. Also, he was quickly getting too cold to move. I... he started, but then just shook his head exasperatedly. I just don't want to be... be scared of the water anymore. It almost got me killed. If it hadn't been for you... That wasn't your fault, Hiccup argued. You were being pulled down. Jack grimaced at the memory. I panicked, he said, immediately. If something like that happens again, or even if I just find myself in some water-related situation, I want to at least be able to think clearly. But I... He stared pointedly at the pond and swallowed thickly. It's too overwhelming. In his peripheral vision, he could see Hiccup studying him. It's brave of you to try, he said. Jack scoffed quietly. Well, I guess since you weren't spying, you didn't see how well that went. It was just the first try, Hiccup countered. You can try again. I don't... Jack cut himself off when he realized he'd started to snap at Hiccup. He glanced up at him, then looked away with a shaky exhale. I don't 
think I can. It reminds me too much of... of that thing that happened. Hiccup nodded slowly. You know, I've had some pretty scary experiences with water, too, he said, in a way that sounded neither accusing nor belittling. I don't know what happened to you exactly, and, of course, people react differently to such events. But there's always coming back from the things you're most afraid of, whether it's water or fire, anything. Jack frowned. He'd never really considered the fact that Hiccup could be afraid of fire. It just didn't make sense for a dragon rider that wielded a flaming sword. And maybe that was because he wasn't afraid of it any more. But from his stories of the Red Death and other dragons that encountered, maybe it wasn't so strange to guess his relationship with fire wasn't entirely stable. I do think, Hiccup then continued, folding his hands and averting his gaze, that the most important thing is to reach out to someone else. Stuff like that is hard to heal from, alone. Jack didn't know what to say to that. He looked at Hiccup again. Hiccup eventually met his eyes, his lips quirking up in a slightly reluctant smile. How? Jack asked. Hiccup opened his mouth, then closed it again. Do you want to try again? he asked. Jack narrowed his eyes. Maybe, he replied. Good, Hiccup said, then smiled again. Easier this time. Um, hold on. Then he reached down and pulled off his shoe. It was Jack's turn to awkwardly look at the ground when Hiccup also took off his shirt, with a visible amount of discomfort. Jack didn't mention it. Hiccup got to his feet and stepped into the water with no problem, then turned expectantly to Jack. Jack hesitated for a moment before he shed the cloak and rose. He grinded his teeth nervously as he stepped into the water again. Just tell me if you want to go back, Hiccup said. His lip was quivering slightly with cold. He took a few steps deeper into the pond and let out a small, relief breath. This is actually kind of nice, he said with a chuckle that made Jack feel a little bit better about dragging him into this. Jack tentatively followed. Maybe it would be better to do this during the day, he murmured. Hiccup shrugged. We're here now. Come on. He held out a hand and smiled encouragingly. It's easier together. He stood there, shivering slightly with cold, the water up to his ribcage, and Jack was hit with a brief moment of wonder at the fact that he found himself in this situation. The fact that Hiccup was okay with taking a random bath in the middle of the night and getting his pants wet just because of Jack's whim. And then, as always, the fact that he, Jack, was even here, visible and human. Are you okay? Hiccup asked, his brows beginning to furrow anxiously. Yes, Jack replied, probably a little too quickly. He tried for a smile. I'm just glad you seem to be feeling better. He stepped towards him and carefully took his hand. That I'm feeling better? Hiccup repeated, while simultaneously walking backwards, deeper into the water. How so? Jack knew that he was trying to keep the conversation going to distract Jack from the water that was slowly rising up to their chests. Don't know, Jack said, voice faint. His mouth began to feel dry. You've just been quiet, I guess. I don't know. We're good, Hiccup said, and Jack didn't know if he was talking about what they were doing now or the thing that had been hanging in the air between them since yesterday. Here, take my other hand too. Oh, Jack said and did as he asked. The water lapped against their shoulders now. Yeah, we're good. Hiccup peered at him curiously. What is it? Jack hadn't realized his facial expressions were that easy to decipher. Jamie was right after all. He needed to talk, not just brood and walk around aimlessly in the forest. It was just that it still felt strange to know he could talk to someone. No, not to. With. Hiccup was willing to listen. No, Hiccup wanted to listen. Maybe he wasn't unnerved by Jack after all. The relief of that thought made a chuckle escape him, though it came out shaky and weak. The Snow Queen, Jack said in a murmur, reluctant to meet Hiccup's eyes. I thought... I was afraid that you... He struggled with his words for several seconds. He was very aware of Hiccup's hands in his own. Was he gripping them too tightly? I mean, you just seemed so... wary... around me. I... I did? Hiccup asked. Jack nodded. Can't blame you, really. Must have been a pretty horrible experience. It was pretty horrible, Hiccup agreed. But I don't feel wary around you. Jack looked up at him and was happy to see that Hiccup met his eyes. Maybe I was just overthinking it, he said with a small shrug. Hiccup got an apologetic look on his face. You can tell me things like that, he said. 
Jack didn't know what to say to that, so he just shrugged again. It's hard, he admitted. There were a few seconds of silence. He kept gently squeezed his hands and led them a little further into the pond. Jack took a deep breath when the water reached his neck and became belatedly aware that he was crushing Hiccup's hands. Hiccup didn't seem to mind and just muttered small reassurances. Wait, Jack said. Not further. You're doing fine, Hiccup said. Jack shook his head. I can't swim. Hiccup raised his brows and nodded. All right, he said. I can teach you if you want. A slightly hysteric laugh escaped Jack, surprising them both. I don't think that's possible for me, he said. Sure it is, Hiccup said, but one step at a time. How do you feel? Jack only had to listen to his frantically beating heart for a second to figure that one out. I'm scared, he admitted, before he could think twice about admitting something like that. There was a lump forming in his throat, but he didn't want to go back. He desperately wanted to take at least another step forward, as Hiccup had said. That's okay, Hiccup said. Just try to remember that you're safe. Nothing will harm you here. Jack swallowed heavily, but nodded. In the back of his mind, he felt a nagging embarrassment at his own vulnerable behavior, but his mind was too stuffed to do anything about it. The only time he'd felt more embarrassed was at the pier on Burke, when Hiccup had caught him yelling at the moon. The weird thing was that there was a certain freedom in showing that side of himself to Hiccup, that he couldn't explain and definitely didn't expect. He doubted it would have been the same had there been anyone else in Hiccup's stead. Do you want to try to go under? Hiccup asked. It took a few moments before Jack managed to find his voice. Okay, he whispered. He met Hiccup's eyes again, and Hiccup nodded once before taking a breath and submerging himself in water. Jack muttered a curse, then took a shaky breath and did the same. His head started spinning immediately, just like last time, but instead of immediately coming back up, he felt Hiccup's grip around his hands, and he squeezed back. In the spur of a moment, his eyes fluttered open. Hiccup squinted back at him and smiled brightly as their eyes met. Jack didn't know why the image seemed so surreal to him, but it was enough to almost make him gasp. He kicked off the ground and broke the surface again. Hiccup followed right after, pushing his hair out of his face. He wiped the water away from his eyes. You good? he asked. Jack couldn't find his voice. His breath came out in short, quiet huffs, and his heart felt as though it was trying to climb up his throat. He felt himself nod, despite the fact that he was still very much panicking. Maybe not as much as earlier, but good wasn't exactly descriptive of what he was feeling right now. He backed up a little towards the edge of the pond, and Hiccup followed. Do you want to get out? Hiccup asked. And then Jack surprised himself by shaking his head. N no, I'm fine, he stammered, even as he all but wheezed for breath. The cold wind was even colder now, and with that cold, painful memories threatened to surface. He shook his head in an attempt to rid himself of them, but they were right there, just at the edge of his mind. Hiccup, he said, though he didn't know what to follow up with. He just needed some distraction. Yes, Hiccup said. Jack could hear his worry through the calm of his voice, but he did a good job at keeping his head when Jack couldn't. It's okay. Just try to breathe. Try, Jack repeated and smiled helplessly. He shuddered. It's cold. Hiccup lowered himself into the water and gently pulled Jack down to do the same. You're doing good, he told him. Am I? Jack asked, giving an almost laugh. You are, Hiccup said with a warm smile. Do you want to try again? Slow down a little bit. Okay. Jack took another minute or so to calm his breath. Then he nodded. Okay, he said again. He let Hiccup guide him back towards the center of the pond until he had to stand on his toes to keep his head over water. Ready? Jack nodded. Hiccup went under again, and Jack took a deep breath and followed. Jack could hear his heart pound in his ears against the heavy quietness. This time he kept his eyes closed and tried to focus on the fact that this water was warm and completely different from that day. He pulled Hiccup's hand closer to himself, bringing them up to his forehead. This was different, he told himself. He was safe. He wasn't alone. He was alive. Safe. Together. Alive. Safe. Together. Alive. He opened his eyes, as if to reassure himself that it really was Hiccup together with him in the water. He was closer now than before, which shouldn't have come as a surprise, since it was Jack who had pulled him closer. Hiccup's brows were furrowed in a silent question. His gaze never wavered. Jack nodded, and a sudden burst of gratefulness made a smile grow on his face. Hiccup grinned back. Jack's stomach twisted gleefully, confusingly, through the panic. He kicked up to the surface again and gasped for breath. 
He kept came back up as well, probably just in time to witness Jack making a noise that was awfully close to a sob. What is it? Hiccup asked. He was smiling and shaking his head, like he couldn't believe Jack's bravery. He looked proud. This is good. You're doing good. Jack shuddered as he inhaled and used the excuse of wiping the water off his face to hide his expression. He cursed himself for being so quick to tear up. That had never been a problem when he was invisible, and now he didn't know how to stop it. He didn't even know why he was tearing up right now. He gave a wobbly laugh. Hiccup, he croaked out, again without really knowing why. It just felt good to say his name, he supposed. When he let his hands fall, Hiccup's green eyes were bright with some kind of emotion that Jack couldn't decipher. But his smile was gentle, and his thumbs rubbed softly against Jack's hands. Ready for another step? he asked. Jack tried swallowing down the lump in his throat, to no avail. What is that? You need to trust me, Hiccup said. I do, Jack said, but narrowed his eyes. With what, though? Hiccup laughed. Just hold on to me he said. You won't sink. He took a step backwards. Jack felt his body go rigid, but he didn't protest. He pulled himself closer to Hiccup, letting go of his hands, only to grasp onto his shoulders. He had the sudden thought that he had to be looking like a cat that accidentally fell into the bathtub. Hiccup, he said again, though this time it came out more as a hiss. I got you, Hiccup reassured him, and Jack felt his hands on his waist. Had the situation been any different, this might have been the moment Hiccup realized Jack was ticklish. But Jack had more than enough distraction to take notice of that right now. You're going to sink, Jack protested. I can stand here. You're just short. Jack laughed. Suddenly, this whole scene felt ridiculous. He still couldn't stop hyperventilating. He grasped onto Hiccup, his legs kicking uselessly in the water in search of the ground. Each time he thought he would sink beneath the surface, his chest constricted fearfully, but each time Hiccup held him up. Eventually his brain realized this, and that was when his body stopped squirming. His hands still gripped tightly onto Hiccup's shoulders, his breath coming in shaky huffs against Hiccup's neck. You okay? Hiccup asked. Jack listened to the beat of his heart again. He met Hiccup's eyes. He smiled. A little better, he breathed. When Hiccup returned his smile, Jack felt the same twist in his stomach, and he closed his eyes, leaning his forehead against Hiccup's cheek. His heart was still pounding. He was still scared, and he probably would be until they got back onto dry ground. But at least he didn't feel like he was drowning anymore. 